Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing alpha thalassemias. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, you can find our Hemonc playlist for step one, high yield content review. So go check it out. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And with that being said, let's talk about microcytic anemias. Microcytic anemias are uh, a type of anemia where you have an MCV that is going to be less than 80, and it's going to present with a smaller red blood cell than normal. Now, this can be defined based off of defective heme synthesis or defective globin chains and essentially what you have is you have hemoglobin which is composed of either heme or you have globin chains now if at any point any portion of this gets messed up you're going to have defective or wonky hemoglobin and that can lead to a microcytic anemia now we've already discussed the defective heme synthesis issues like iron deficiency lead poisoning sideroblastic anemia in our previous videos we're going to talk about anemia chronic disease later but today we are going to be focusing right here defective globin chain specifically we are going to be discussing alpha thalassemia that is what we're talking about the globin chain portion of hemoglobin development so let's talk about alpha thalassemia Alpha thalassemia is a hereditary hemoglobin disorder that occurs on the alpha chain. And the alpha globin chain is going to have gene deletions that are leading to alpha thalassemia. Now, the severity of the disease is going to depend on the number of gene deletions. Now, the globin chains are made up of two pairs. Recall from previous videos and from previous physiology that you have hemoglobin in different forms. So you have hemoglobin A. Two, A1, sorry, I start with A1. In adults, you have hemoglobin A2 also in adults, and then you also have hemoglobin F. Hemoglobin A1 is going to be this right here. You're going to have two alpha chains and two beta chains. In hemoglobin A2, you're going to have two alpha chains, but you're going to have two delta chains. And in hemoglobin F, you're going to have two alpha chains, but two gamma chains. That is what's happening. So this is what the globin chains are made up of. These little pleated sheets uh, right here is what the globin chains look like. And these green molecules are heme. Now, the alpha thalassemia genes are located on chromosome 16. And there are four genes. That means you have four main types of gene deletions. So let's talk about the first type of gene deletion called alpha thalassemia minima. In this case, you're going to have one gene deletion. That is what is causing alpha thalassemia minima. And at the end of the day, in this gene, in this condition, you're not really going to have any anemia present, but you are going to have a silent carrier state. And that's probably the highest yield thing to remember from alpha thalassemia minima, other than the fact that it is a single gene that's being uh, deleted from the gene pool that you have. And uh, there is also going to be normal red blood cell production. These patients are going to be asymptomatic. They're going to present completely normally. Then you have alpha thalassemia minor, in which you're going to have two gene deletions. And you can either have a trans deletion, where the deletions are going to be on the opposite side. And this is mainly going to affect uh, African Americans. Or you can have a cis deletion, which are going to be on the same side. And this mainly affects Asians. And there's going to be a higher risk for offsprings in this type of gene deletions. The, the offsprings of Asians are going to be, or patients who have cis de gene deletions, in alpha thalassemia minor are going to have a higher risk of developing alpha thalassemia. These patients are going to present with mild microcytic hyperchromatic anemia, but for the most part, they're still going to be able to function normally in their day-to-day -day lives. So the, uh, the alpha thalassemia minima and minor are very, uh, either no symptoms to very mild uh, symptoms that are occurring. And the next gene deletion occurs with three genes, and that's called hemoglobin H disease. You're going to have three genes that are now deleted in the alpha uh, globin chain gene pool. So you're going to have three gene deletions, and this is going to present with moderate to severe microcytic hypochromatic anemia. These patients might be hypoxic. They may not be getting enough oxygen in their blood because they are not producing a good amount of hemoglobin. Now, what you can get is uh, hemoglobin H. And hemoglobin H disease is usually going to present with excess beta globin production producing B4 in, instead of A2, B2, whatever, alpha 2, B, beta 2, uh, because you have such a decreased hemoglobin, uh, sorry, decreased alpha globin chain production. It's so low because you have deleted three genes, you're going to have low alpha globin chains. That's what's happening. All right, so let's just review really quickly while we're at it. You have now hemoglobin A1, you have hemoglobin A2, hemoglobin F, and now hemoglobin 
H. A1 consists of alpha 2, 2 alpha, 2 beta uh, chains. You have in hemoglobin A2, 2 alpha chains and uh, 2 delta chains. In hemoglobin F, you have 2 alpha chains. And then you also have 2 gamma chains. And in hemoglobin H, you have 0 alpha chains, but 4 beta chains. In these cases, patients are going to present with abnormal red blood cell production, and they're going to have extravascular hemolysis, extravascular hemolysis. So what does that mean? Normally, your bl red blood cells are going to be circulating in your, uh, um, in your circulatory system. And if they are lysed or if they are broken down in the circulatory system, you're going to have intravascular hemolysis. Now, extravascular hemolysis is going to present when they get broken down in your spleen because one of the functions of your spleen is to break down red blood cells. So these patients are going to present with splenomegaly. They will also have indirect hyperbilirubinemia and an increase in their LDH amount because of the extravascular hemolysis. Now, in this case, the treatment is going to be pretty simple. You can uh, treat these patients with, uh, it should say splenectomy, excuse me. It should say you can treat these patients with a splenectomy and blood transfusions to make sure they are getting the proper amount of hemoglobin and so you can reduce their uh, symptoms of iron, def uh, sorry, of uh, microcytic anemia. So that happens. Hemoglobin H occurs with three gene deletions. Hemoglobin BARTS, hemoglobin BARTS occurs with four gene deletions. All of your alpha chain genes are deleted, and this is going to be incompatible with life. These patients or these, uh, th this is going to develop, this is going to cause hydrops fatalis to occur in the fetus. They're not going to be able to develop properly, and eventually an abortion will occur, a natural abortion. Now, there are going to be no alpha productions, and you're going to have excess gamma globin production, and you're going to produce gamma 4. So let's just do a complete recap, okay? Hemoglobin A1, hemoglobin A2, hemoglobin F, hemoglobin H and hemoglobin BARTs, HBB. So in, uh, in uh, these three hemoglobin A1, A2, and fetus, fetal hemoglobin, you're going to have two alpha chains. You're going to have beta, two beta chains in hemoglobin A1. You're going to have two delta chains. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, two delta chains in hemoglobin alpha 2, A2. And then in hemoglobin F, fetal hemoglobin, you're going to have two gamma chains. HBH, hemoglobin H disease, you're going to have four beta chains, and in hemoglobin bars, you're going to have four gamma chains. That's what's happening. The way I like to think about it is because this is a type of fetal hemoglobin, right? This is why you are producing the fetal, uh, uh, the, the second fetal globin chain more, because you have no hemoglobin A, sorry, you have no alpha, alpha uh, globin chain production. You are only going to have the gamma globin chain production. And this is similar in my mind to HBH, hemoglobin H disease, but in a fetus, which means instead of beta, you're going to have gamma production. And that's the way I always remembered it. And that's the way it made it really simple for me. So with that being said, we are done with the alpha thalassemia lecture. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel while you're there. Don't forget to follow us on our Instagram account at mad.medicine and on our Twitter account, it's madmedicine. And you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.